Guys, moving on to number 24. It says, what types of things can dissolve in water? Give some examples. Now, remember that water is a polar uh, solvent, so it can only dissolve polar solutes. So polar solutes, example of those would be like ionic solids, uh, salts, uh, anything that is a metal bonded to a non-metal, those are salts. So any one of those can be dissolved in water. Now 25, it says, what is the molarity of a solution that contains 115 grams of hydrochloric acid in a 5 liter solution? So what we would do here, we know that molarity equals moles all over liters. Okay, so we need moles and we need liters. We have liters, we don't have moles. So what we have to do is we have to change that 115 grams of HCl into moles of HCl and we do that using the molar mass. Okay, remember we add up the mass of one hydrogen, one chlorine and we know that one mole of HCl is going to equal 36.46 grams of HCl. Okay, so all we have to do is we set this up and we take our 115 grams of HCl put that on top, start with that, put grams on the bottom, so 36.46 grams of HCl all equals one mole of HCl. And we see that that will cancel out that unit. We go ahead and work this out um, and we should get something right around uh, 3.1541 and that is moles of HCl. And all we do is we take that, plug that into our original equation we put our moles over liters, so we're going to put our 3.1541 all over 5. And we should get an answer for this problem of a molarity of right around 0 0.631 moles over liters. Okay, number 26, it says list the properties of acids. Uh, remember that acids turn uh, litmus paper from blue to red. Uh, they taste sour. They have a pH uh, between 0 and 7. Uh, they're hydrogen ion donors. They conduct electricity and they react with metals to release hydrogen gas. Alright guys, moving on to 27. It says list the properties of bases. Uh, we know that they turn uh, red litmus paper blue. They're slippery. They're bitter. They have a pH uh, between 8 and and 14. There are hydrogen um, ion acceptors. Okay, moving on to 28. It says, what are the three theories for acids and bases? We have the bronson lowry definition of it where acids donate hydrogen ions, bases accept hydrogen ions. Uh, and remember that they come in pairs. We have our conjugate acids and conjugate bases. Uh, we have the Rhenius definition where acids produce hydrogen ions and bases produce hydroxide ions. And then our last definition is uh, the Lewis definition of it where acids accept an electron pair and bases donate an electron pair. Now in 29 it says in the reaction where we have water reacting with water we see the self ionization of water and it says what are the conjugate acid base pairs? So here, what we have to do is we have to label them, okay? And either one of these waters can turn into either one. So we're just going to pair them up, okay? We have this water pairing up with that hydroxide, this water pairing up with that hydronium. And if we look at the definition of it, um, we see that anything that is going to uh, go ahead and... Um, go ahead and uh, produce hydrogen ions so it's going to produce them so therefore it's going to donate them anything that donates it is going to be an acid anything that accepts it is going to be a base okay so we're looking at this and this right here what happens to that well that's going to be an acid because it gave up one of its hydrogens here we're looking at this and we see that it go ahead and it accepts it so the bases will always accept so that becomes a base. So that means that on the other side of this, that means that this hydronium is going to be a conjugate acid and this hydroxide is going to be a conjugate base. Okay, moving on to 30, it says define amphoteric. 
um, and give an example of it. And amphoteric means that it can either uh, be an acid or base. We see that right here in the cell finization of water. They were both water, but one of them was an acid and the other was a base. Okay, uh, the pH scale, it ranges from uh, 0 to 14. Okay, guys, moving on to 32, it says if the solution has a pH of 8, um, it is an acidic or basic, and we know that since it's 8, anything above 7 is going to be basic. Uh, 33, what is the pH of uh, 10 to the negative second? And that's molarity solution. So what we do here to figure out its pH, all we do is we take the number that is right here, bring that down, and we know that that is going to be the pH. So as a pH of 2, because all we did is brought that, bring that number down. Don't worry about it being negative. Just bring the number down. Take the absolute value of it. pH of 2 is definitely going to be acidic. Number 34, it says define neutralization. Uh, neutralization is an acid plus base equals water plus salt. Uh, it's the reaction between an acid and base during a titration. Uh, we get that neutralization reaction where we have acid plus base equals water plus salt. And then 35, it says the greater the kinetic energy of the particles in a sample of matter, the greater the temperature is. Remember, kinetic energy means movement. The more something moves, the higher temperature it's going to be. All right, guys, moving on to 36. It says a 10-gram sample of iron was heated from 0 degrees Celsius to... 20 degrees Celsius, got a 10 gram sample. It says it absorbed 35.3 joules of energy as heat. What is the specific heat? Okay, so we're dealing with specific heat. We need the equation Q equals mcp-delta T. Okay, um, remember you'll have this on your formula chart that I'll give you. It's on the tax formula chart as well. Okay, so it wants us to know what is the specific heat. So we are solving for Cp. All right, let's go ahead and write down what we're given. Uh, we have a Q of 35.3 joules. We have a mass, or an M, of 10 grams. And we have a change in temperature. Remember, change in temperature means final minus initial. So it's heated. So 20, is going, 20 degrees Celsius is going to be our final. Zero degrees Celsius is going to be our initial. Uh, so final minus initial 20 minus 0 is going to give us a change in temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, Taking it from here, let's go ahead and let's work out our equation solving for specific heat. Algebraically, we know since we're multiplying on that side, we have to divide by mass times change in temperature on both sides to go ahead and cancel them out. So we'll get the equation of specific heat equals our heat all divided by our mass times our uh, change in temperature. Go ahead and take this and plug in what we have. We have our 35.3 joules. Uh, we have our 10 all times our 20. And we work this out and we should get an answer of right around 0 0.177. And the unit is joules, grams, times degrees Celsius. All right, guys, moving on to 37 is define entropy, um, and that is the random or chaos, randomness or chaos in the system. Okay, 38 is what are the three factors that affect reaction rates? That is concentration, temperature, and surface area. All right, guys, moving on to 39, it says what does the 4 in... Uh, 42HE represent, we know that the 4 is going to represent the mass number. Remember the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons in an atom. And then the 2 represents the atomic number. Remember the atomic number is uh, how everything on the periodic table is organized. So if we need to know what element it is, we look here and we look at the atomic number, look on the periodic table, table and it tells us. If we need to know what isotope it is, we look at the mass number and that's going to tell us what isotope. Now, in 40, it says in nuclear reaction, what happens to the nuclei of an atom? Um, the atoms in a nuclear reaction, the atoms become more stable and they give off large amounts of energy. So when either they're in a fusion or a fission reaction, uh, they're going to become more stable. They're going to give off a lot of energy while they do this as well. 
Okay, here we see a nuclear equation. It says balance the following equation. Okay, main thing here, the numbers on the top have to add up on both sides. Uh, so we see we have a total of 226 on this side. We have 222 on this side. So 226 minus 222 gives us a 4 for our mass number. Okay, same thing with our atomic numbers. We have a total of 88 on this side. So 88 minus 86 gives us a total of 2. And that's our atomic number. We look on the periodic table and the symbol that represents 2 is helium. Looking at number 42. Okay, same thing here. They got to add up. So we have uh, 239 for our total on this side. That means we have to have 239 over here. So zero or 239 minus zero gives us 239 for our mass number. We look at our atomic number and we go 93 minus negative one. And remember that we'll turn that one into a positive. So this will become a 94 and we look on the periodic table and that stands for polonium. Okay, moving on to 43, we're looking at half-life. It says, what is the half-life of an isotope if 25 grams of a 50 gram sample of the isotope remains after three years? Well, remember half-life is how long it takes for half of an atom's mass or half of a sample's mass to decay. Uh, meaning it changes into something else. So if we're looking here, we see that on our first half-life, 50 divided by 2 is going to give us 25. That was our first half-life. Well, that's how much we have. So that means there's only one half-life that it took. And it took three years for it to decay half. So therefore, that's a half-life of three years. Okay, guys. And here on number 44, it says to find fission and write a nuclear equation for fission reaction. Uh, fission is the splitting of a heavy nucleus into two nuclei with smaller mass numbers. Okay, um, It always starts with an addition of a neutron so in our equation we're going to have one neutron and, and here we're going to use uranium-235 uh, Okay, and uranium has an atomic number of 92 symbol of U. What happens is that neutron comes in and it bombards that uranium nucleus and um, it creates uh, uranium-236 and it breaks apart into barium-142 um, and it breaks up into krypton-91 and then we have three neutrons that go off uh, and keep the reaction going and it releases a lot of energy a okay, fission reaction a lot of energy okay defined fusion uh, number 45 it says combine uh, the definition is combining two uh, light nuclei to form a heavy more stable nucleus main difference between fission and fusion fission we're breaking apart um, a very large atom Fusion, uh, we're combining two like nuclei. It's very light, very low mass numbers uh, to form a more stable one.